Um, so should we follow the same format? I mean, Adam, you've Adam and Pam, you've yeah. introduced yourselves, but maybe if David, if you'd like to introduce <coughs> yourself, and then we'll <coughs> questions. Yeah, okay, sure. Uh, I'm actually David Healy, and I work in Wales. And I'm here for an odd reason, um, really, um, which is years ago when uh, the fuss about these drugs blew up, uh, I drew up a very brief <coughs> protocol about how to get off them. In actual fact, I just took the protocol that we use for trying to get people off, say, drugs <coughs> like uh, the benzodiazepines and <coughs> moved it over to the SSRIs. It's probably the case that there's people here in the room who know more about how to get off these drugs than I do. Ah, let's frame that slightly differently. I hear from l loads and loads of people who uh, have problems trying to get off the drugs and they've gone through the protocol or they've done all the usual things to try and get off the drugs and they don't seem to be able to, okay? I've asked loads and loads of people what we can do for anyone who's, uh, who's actually finding it hard to get off the drugs <coughs> and the conclusion <coughs> I've come to is that it can be awfully hard to do and uh, that for a proportion of people there may not be any answers. So I've come here partly to try and see if you guys have any answers. One of the problems we've got is you may have come here wondering if I have any <laughs> answers, so <laughs> we both have to share this problem, okay? <clears throat> okay, so do you want to add anything <coughs> to that, or should we just start taking Only contributions? Only to agree, <laughs> right, okay. We need to pool our, our resources. Right, so are there any contributions, Catherine? Well, um, a psychologist from Shropshire, <coughs> um, he was helping his clients um, come off psychoactive drugs. <coughs> and the best way that he, he thought was to, um, well, from experience, was to only do one drug at a time yeah. and leave the benzodiazepines till last. And, and he didn't mention SSR, and he didn't mention SSR. And having tried to withdraw um, a, a, a benzo and a neuroleptic at the same time, and we did go askew, I would go along with that. I think that makes sense. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's one of my golden rules never ever withdraw two drugs at once. I mean, the rule used to be that um, when we were dealing with tricyclics, that you withdrew the benzo first on the rationale that the tricyclic would then keep the, the, the nervous system stable while you did the reduction. Since SSRIs have come in, that is less clear cut because very often, if the patient comes off the benzo first, then does the SSRI, they then become very anxious in the withdrawal and want to resort back to the benzo. So it's more of a problem which to do first. And I'm inclined to think very often it's better to do it the other way around when, when you're dealing with SSRIs. Yes. Well, I mean, very, I mean, I think it's important that. They, 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 yes, their preference is taken into consideration, but that they also do that um, from a clued up point of view, knowing what doing one first and then the other is going to entail and what oh, yeah. difficulties they yeah. may have if they choose to do it one way rather than the other. Mm. I think that's true across the board anyway yeah. with the whole subject. Yeah. There was another question at the back there. They, they cause problems in that, as was mentioned earlier, some people lack an enzyme in the liver which enables it for them to deal with the SSRI. Um, and then this may lead to problems and may mean that, that alcohol, for instance, isn't as adequately dealt with if the liver's too busy, desperately trying to deal with the SSRI. And it may also lead to um, really bizarre and, and very, very um, acute reactions to the SSRI. I mean, David may want to say something about that. Too. Uh, no, no, um, sure. Um, uh, it's just um, I, I was actually thinking about a completely different issue. Well, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, you know, Sorry. Uh, um, the point I wanted to ask was if these drugs slow down the action mm. of the liver and they kind of can build up to a toxic, yeah. more toxic sort yeah. of level and cause problems. Um, well, I don't think things that's what leads to you being hooked to them. Not hooked, no, yeah. but, but causing problems. Things like St John's wort actually speed up... Um, the process of the liver and I'm wondering if there's been any research um, with use of things like St John's Wall as a replacement to clear the body and get the person on a more stable footing again. <coughs> um, in terms of trying to uh, alleviate the side effects that maybe the SSRIs can cause, part of the problem I guess is that St John's Wort itself also uh, 
uh, actually acts in a bit the same way. So it, it can cause all of the problems that you know, the SSRIs can cause. So you know, um, there's a group of people who say uh, that uh, do reasonably well on, say, the SSRIs, and they can change over to St. St. John's work and report just the same good things from it as they get from drugs like Prozac. And then there are people who do awfully poorly on the SSRIs, and when they change over to St. John's work, they report all the problems on it that they've had mm. with drugs like Prozac. So it's not absolutely simple. You know, um, if we could just sort of move uh, kind of the active drug out and move St. John's work in, that would be fine. But it's not always that easy. I'm a research psychologist from Cambridge, and I'm linked to a group in Cambridge called CAMS Coping with Coming Off, um, which runs um, support groups for service users thinking about medication. And my question is for Adam, really. Um, I've noticed in your details that you um, run self-help groups um, talking about these issues, and I wondered if you could share with us some of your experience of particularly how the peer support works um, and just how you run those groups, really? We, we ran a group for a while in Hebden Bridge called Coming Off. Um, we kind of changed it. I was just telling someone a minute ago. We, we, we changed it. The name of the group's changed because mm. people wanted to change it. And B, it's called Psych, Psych Medicine New. And one of the reasons we did that is that some people came to the group weren't in a place where they could come off, where they felt the obstacles were, were too many and that they needed needed some more time and th those people found it difficult coming to a group that was about coming off because you know it's like the goal was to come off so we we've kind of changed it we we have very few rules we kind of run them the same way that we run all the self-help groups which is similar to hearing voices which is that um, <coughs> there's no one wisdom that we all have wisdom the truth has many faces uh, you know the, there are many versions of the truth and I've got a copy of the ground rules that we had um, one was about confidentiality, so what we kind of run in the group stays in the group. Although we did agree that it might be beneficial to, to share stories outside of the group, but not, not the personal information. So it might be good to tell other people, well, actually I found, you know, getting to sleep using certain herbs was, was better for me, and we, we talk, thought about that. There was a mutual respect for individuals' opinions, beliefs, ideas, and, uh, the other thing was that we, we kind of had one person speaking <coughs> at a time. The two aims to the group were kind of to share information about ways to reduce or come off psychiatric meds, to, to, to share ideas about alternative ways to live with what's happening. We kind of ran the groups on the, on the premise that, that these experiences have their root in, in our life histories, not, not really in, in <coughs> brain chemistry. Sure, brain chemistry has some some play in that, but, but we need to look at other ways forward. Um, we always said that the responsibility for, for what, hap you know, what people do with the medication stays with the individual. It's not, it's not the group's responsibility, really, um, to decide that. To give you a bit of an idea about what we did for the format of the group, we might start with a technique that might help. So, um, for example, someone might bring a breathing exercise to the group and we'd all have a go at the breathing exercise or, or we might talk about a particular therapy that might be useful, uh, say for, um, for voices we were talking about a uh, technique that's, that's kind of gaining a lot of motion called voice style and talking with voices. Um, uh, we might do meditation or, or do a bit of drama and kind of just, just show people the different ways that they can deal with things. After that, we kind of spend a bit of time going round and just seeing where everybody was at um, in terms of their week, what was happening with them, what was happening with medication, where did, they, where did they see themselves, and there'd be a bit of a break there. And then afterwards, we would kind of maybe review some of the information that we have around a particular drug or type of drug. To borrow you from John's work, um, and kind of just just leave it like that. Really, we did occasionally. I mean, we have supported one of two, one or two people outside of the group who were in hospital and and finding it difficult to have those conversations with professionals. But generally, that's how the group runs. Is that 
Do you want to say something about the um, Icarus Project guidelines? Yeah. Yeah, we. Do you want some copies? I have. I've brought <laughs> this. This is available on our on our website, comingoff.com. Imagine that in the title, so you can download it. But this is a. Uh, harm reduction <coughs> guide by an American project called the Icarus Project. Uh, I, I think it's really good. It's really quite informative, and it kind of takes you through kind of looking at how you might view your experiences. You know how you might understand them to whether you want to come off of psychiatric drugs and ways of thinking about that. And there is a harm reduction thing about if you want to stay on psychiatric drugs things that you might be able to do that, that might help as well, like maybe lowering the dose and, and things like that. So there are copies here which feel free to take because I've, I've kind of brought them for that reason. But if, if, they're, if they've all gone, you can access it on our website comingoff.com. Does that mention dietary advice? Because I'm quite into that recently. Yeah, it does. You know, it, it, if people stay on these drugs, it's quite useful to have um, advice um, to do a diet which will help them. Yeah, it's, it's quite that's, 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 that's very <coughs> useful. Um, this, the, the website coming up off.com, if everyone isn't familiar with it, is also a brilliant yeah, website. Yeah. Adam's been involved in setting it up in Rufus May. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's lots of stories of people who've successfully come off or reduced, which I think is quite. Um, encouraging and lots of information plus you can download those guidelines so I'd really encourage people to look if, to if, if you've got stories of, of coming off or, or trying to come off then if you'd like to add them there that would be great as well you know you add to people's experiences and you can contact us through the website as well so, so. can I just ask the room a question mm -hmm. uh, are there people in the room who um, just aren't able to come off these things at all yeah because I think, I mean, I think all these things are helpful, but I think we probably need to recognize that we don't know what's involved in the, uh, the, the withdrawal syndrome. Uh, we don't know how many people just aren't able to come off at all. And you could really end up in a bit of a pickle if you think you should be able to come off mm. and go at it in a very kind of determined way and find you can't. And I think we don't really know why they can't come off, do we? No. We don't really know what yeah. mechanism yeah, is. I think that's, that's the importance <coughs> of planning, you know, mm -hmm. so that you have a kind of backup plan right, if, if you're not able to do this. And, and that's why we changed the name of the group, because we don't want people to feel that they failed in some way mm -hmm. by ending up in that situation. But, you know, it is a very difficult process. We've noticed that the more, the longer that people spend on these drugs, the harder it is to get off. Um, you know, and if you, if you can, if, if, if anyone's involved in it, make sure that they stay on the lowest dose possible right from the start if they even have to use them, you know. Before I take more contributions. Do you want to come? Okay. Quick, I think there's a middle ground that's probably important. Um, <clears throat> if you say that we sort of ought to use the pills, that there are real illnesses there that the pills treat, and if you have problems when you hold your pills, this is just the, uh, you know, what, we're, what, what we actually see is just the illness come back, then you aren't going to uh, sort of learn the kinds of things that we could learn from the pills, which is that within, say, the antipsychotics, there are ones that do cause uh, 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 withdrawal problems more often than, than sort of uh, drugs in the group that seem uh, that, 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 that seem to be probably less likely to cause problems. Within, say, the antidepressant group, there are drugs that are worse, uh, and there are drugs that aren't as, 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 uh, as bad. If you take the view that the pills shouldn't be used at all, you again end up not knowing, are there good drugs, bad <coughs> drugs? A thing that I think we probably need to learn, um, those of us who aren't at the extreme, uh, sort of a, is, is just to keep a close eye on the pills and see if there are ones that are worse than, than say, the others. And if so, why? Because we don't, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, I think we don't actually know which pills uh, are, are, uh, are actually the worst. You hear things like it's uh, the short half-life of the pills, but this isn't the whole answer. We don't know why it's harder, usually for women, than men. Uh, it seems usually that women are m more likely to get hooked to these pills than men, and we just don't know why. Um, <clears throat> I think what we need is uh, all of the people who, who 
do end up in the pills need to work with those who actually hand the pills out to try, well, to A, uh, to concede that there is a problem, and having uh, conceded that there could be a problem, then we need to look at, well, within the problems people have, which are the drugs that actually are more likely to cause these problems, and what can conceivably be done to get people off. Now, just to add this point, one more quick thing. There is an issue that has come up, and it uh, actually came up from you at the end of the previous session, which was, why don't we do things like try to skill people up to handle, say, the uh, <coughs> problems that they have? Uh, you know, that, you know, we oughtn't to be handing out the pills quite as easily as we do. Part of the reason we know there's a problem with the pills goes way beyond that in the sense that an awful lot of the problems are uh, a huge proportion of people who end up hooked to these pills are people who don't have mental health problems at all. Yeah. They're put on the SSRIs for postmenopausal flushes, things like that. Mm -hmm. They aren't told that there could be risks. They end up, uh, you know, um, they end up then finding that they aren't able to halt. So there are huge issues here that need to be teased out. Adam, did you want to yeah, come back to Just Claudia? really quickly, because you said, can people go on to live good lives after psychiatric drugs? Simply yes, you yeah. know. That, that is the case, you know. But it is a hard process to go through. You know, there's a lot of work involved. And is this after coming off them? Yeah, and, it, and, and while you're coming off them, I think, that, you know, if you take the view that, that these drugs suppress a lot of what you're experiencing, then you have to find a way to deal with that you know, an alternate way to deal with that as well. But if you can do that, yes, you can live successfully. We've seen people do it. Yeah, so yes. I have as well. We're talking, almost talking like these drugs, is there like something like heroin or something like that? It seems to me that we're talking about coming off these drugs is actually as big a problem as people coming off heroin. This shouldn't be. This should not be in our system. Our system is obviously completely needing an overhaul, as far as I'm concerned. We need a lot more support groups, just like you're running. We need a lot more support. People, I think the mental health service is quite aware of this now, really, that people need support coming off these drugs. People need support groups. They need, well, you I know, don't they need. I think the mental they, health system is aware. I think well, getting back, close, otherwise mm. people like this wouldn't be able to work within it, you know. But there's I, extremely few people like this. Yes. Mm -hmm. If you go back and have a look at where things were in the 80s when we sort of uh, had actually recognised <coughs> that we could have a problem trying to come off, say, the benzodiazepines, within a reasonably brief period of time, most mental health services had groups to help people come off the benzodiazepines. We don't have that for the antidepressants. Mm. We don't. You know, um, so we're actually in a much worse position than yeah. we were as regards to benzodiazepines. Yeah, there's a lot for them, but I don't know if there's anything else generally. Just quickly, I think you have raised a point that's, um, that's actually hugely important, which is that I get faced with a huge number of people who have been on pills uh, for years, okay? And the problem that they had to uh, to begin with that led to them being put on the pills was often quite minor. What's awfully hard to actually to explain to people later is you may not have had much of a problem to begin with, you may not have needed to be on these pills, but you do have a problem now. The pills have caused an imbalance and it's not clear what's going to happen when we try to halt them. It could be that even if you didn't need to be on the pills when you put on them first, that you have to be on them now because, you know, we just aren't going to be able to get you off them. Mm. Um, so <coughs> this can be awfully tricky. And, and this man next, yeah? yeah um, next first of all, um, I don't know, um, my name's Peter Payne. I'm a service user. I also run a couple of self-help groups. <coughs> I suffered depression for many years, 30, 30 plus years. and. Uh, didn't take any medication, and then finally, I, you know, six months depression, and then a couple of weeks I, I felt okay, and I thought, no, I'm going to go to my GP and get the happy pill, you know, um, wanted Prozac, but he put me on a tricyclic. But um, so I got to the stage where I needed, I was going through all these alternative therapies as well, so I tried all these things that you're suggesting, and in fact, I mean, I'm against um, SSRIs that I'm on now because I'm trying to come off one, which is very difficult. But, in fact, you get to a stage where I think the, the, the drugs do help some people, um, you know, in an emergency situation. 
you know, I, you know, I wasn't suicidal, but um, so I've got this um, ambivalent feeling about medication. Um, I mean, I'm on S I'm on venlafaxine now, trying to get it, get off um, venlafaxine, which is very difficult. Now, I'm also there's a thing, a question that I want to raise about the information leaflets that you get in the packs of drugs when you get them. I mean, they're so vague. They're, it's almost like if you have a uh, survey done on your house, when you get a 10-page um, copy of this survey, it's ridiculous because it doesn't really, you know, look at the structure of the house or any of this, you know, the roof or anything like that. So they cover themselves. Basically, the drug companies cover themselves. Um, you know, most of the <coughs> drugs that you take for depression, um, SSRIs or antipsychotics uh, say do not take alcohol or it's advised not to take alcohol, don't drive, things like that. Now most people I know who take these drugs just ignore them, okay? Perhaps some of them will drink excessively, some not. Now I didn't know these things about how they interact with the, kid, um, with the liver. Um, <coughs> so <coughs> the information leaflet doesn't go into the detail that actually, you know, is honest about how toxic these drugs are. Um, with the drug I'm coming off now, I went to my psychiatrist three weeks ago. He said, oh, well, um, well I'll take you off uh, venlafaxine. It's an SSRI. You're bipolar. That can push you into a hypermanic state. You're on mood stabilizers. That should be enough. Now, I said, I've read on the internet that this particular SNRI, actually it's not SSRI, um, is very, very difficult to come off. It's not, um, the information is not given in the leaflet. I think Wyeth have actually been forced to mention the discontinuation syndrome, mm. that they call it, rather than coming off. And um, my psychiatrist said, oh, well, we'll drop your dose by half and then stop it completely. And I said, well, hang on, if I miss one dose, I have these really weird side effects, you know, sort of splitting headaches, nausea, dizziness, um, you know, um, intestinal problems, uh, electric shock type, you know, zap, brain zaps that most of the people describe them as. Now that's just uh, stopping one dose. Now you're telling me to come off this drug um, after two weeks of half a dose. Now third week, this fourth week in, that half dose is not enough. I'm still suffering these withdrawal symptoms. So luckily I had a supply of the original dose, which I've gone back on to now. Mm -hmm. um, now, the information I get from friends in support groups, you know, they say, well, no, try, uh, you know, get your psychiatrist to uh, put you on to a, um, a less, um, you know, toxic drug, another um, so, um, antidepressant and then wean yourself off the venlafaxine, and then you're on the other one, but you can come off that one um, without the side effects that you get from venlafaxine. Now, little things like that, the psychiatrist should have, you know, maybe they don't read the internet, they don't read these um, sites where, you know, people um, you know, post on, on um, sure. e-community site, sites. Um, withdrawal from the benzodiazepines didn't really get described good and proper till probably the 1970s. Withdrawal from uh, the antidepressants was described, I'm aware of, first in 1961. And people said, look, you need to pay heed to this because A, there's a withdrawal syndrome, uh, which can be a problem, and B, it means that the people who use the drugs to treat people who are depressed may overestimate how well the drugs are actually doing because they put you on the drugs, you appear to improve, they halt the drugs and you get worse again, and they think, oh, this drug is really good, you know, it really helps control things. With uh, the benzodiazepines, um, we have since the late 80s uh, all kind of the information leaflets that you would get if you were put on them do give a withdrawal protocol. It's clear in them, you know, that drugs do cause problems. People are highly scared of them. Here are the things you can do. As regards the antidepressants, 46 years later or more, we still, in the patient leaflets, in the BNF, there isn't any hint that here is the way to withdraw that there could be, well, there's a hint, but that's all. There, but there aren't, you know, the kind of, uh, uh, there aren't uh, the kind of protocols we have, say, for trying to get off the benzodiazepines. There isn't 
any concession at all that there may be people who just mm. won't be able to get off. <coughs> um, and I don't know why, Pam. No. I think in well, the case of the benzodiazepines, there was a big fuss from people, people like you, people out in the street, that hasn't been the same fuss as regards the antidepressants. And that's probably the, you know, Mm, I don't know the why that is. Factor. I mean, um, if for the gentleman at the back, if <coughs> anyway, we do have protocols for coming off the drugs. I've written a book which has, which contains those protocols. I have got a few copies with me, so if you're interested, that may be of use. I've also got leaflets for my organisation, so you can contact us at a later stage. But as David says, that to me is also. I, I also find that quite amazing. I mean, I took part recently in an inquiry with the government, which were wait, um, waiting for for a report to be published probably in December. Certainly the point which I, one of the main points which I got over at that was, was largely what David was saying. Why is this not being dealt with? Why are people committing suicide because these drugs are not being properly monitored? And why is there no help available for those who have become um, addicted? Let's not mess about with words. If, if they, to all intents and purposes, that's what it is. And there seems to be a total closed shop on this. Nobody's admitting to this. Um, so we hope very much that when that report is published, there may be, um, I, and the people who are involved in that lead me to believe that something more is going to be said and there may be something done about it, but we can only wait and see. Um, David, back, yeah. back in uh, 2003, you wrote a paper, I mean, you wrote loads of papers, I know, where you spoke about um, drug companies not being required to show the SSRIs called dependency. Is that still so today, in 2008? Yeah. Just what the antidepressants cause is unclear. <coughs> it isn't the same kind of thing as getting hooked to the opiates. What the pharmaceutical companies do is when they bring new drugs to the market, they screen the drugs to see could they do the kinds of things that opiates do. Could you get hooked to this new drug in the way you would get hooked to an opiate? Yeah. They don't screen for the kinds of problems that the antidepressants are the antipsychotics cause. They just don't screen for that at all. Mm. Why, why is that? Because surely, they To some extent, because we don't recognize still that there is a problem and that it's not just the usual old style opiate problem. People just don't recognize that this is a, uh, 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 an extremely different beast in ways worse than being hooked. To an opiate. And then it suits the pharmaceutical companies not to do this because then people have to take the drugs, then they become dependent on them. So it doesn't suit their interests, their financial interests, to go down that research line. So yeah. who, who would do it? Uh, it's awfully hard to know who would do it apart from the people who are on the drugs who have an interest to say, well, look, you know, I just can't get off these things. And perhaps through the media to, uh, to actually make uh, to actually make more people who could be put in the drugs aware that there is uh, an issue here. <laughs>